I'm Gordon Gidlin, and I was in the Republic of Korea from 1977 to 79. My first year I was in the village of Yeongdong, and the second year I was in the provincial capital of Cheongju. Okay. My name is Linda Gidlin. At the time I was Linda Do. Uh, I was in Korea as a, an English, uh, teaching English as a foreign language. Uh, the first year in Nesu, a very small town in the mountains, and second year in Cheongju, the provincial capital of Chungchungbukdo. Uh, we met in the Hotel California in staging. <laughs> For, we were in the same group, K43, okay. and um, then we happened to be placed in the same uh, province, so we saw each other. Uh, okay. uh, but uh, he's from Wisconsin, and I'm from Hawaii, so that's where we met. <laughs> Well, it's sort of funny. When we went there, uh, there, and there still are a lot of American troops in Korea, but we had just gotten there in 77, and Jimmy Carter was president, and he, had, he, he wanted to withdraw all our troops there. And that, at the time, was the one country where we had troops where they wanted them there. So the Koreans, it was sort of always a love-hate relationship, and we always, uh, <laughs> always had to endure that. Generally, Peace Corps was a huge experience in my life. Um, I dated a lot of things from before Peace Corps and after Peace Corps. Um, and I, well, I'm, I'm uh, the descendant of Korean immigrants to Hawaii, so in a way, it was uh, um, really, it was really interesting to be back in the land of my grandparents. And uh, someone I knew uh, at university arranged for me to visit the village where my father's family was from. And that was really something. We, we had, I, I met a rice farmer who looked a lot like my father, uh, but uh, there was really, he was a world apart. I'm Frances Holliday Alford, and I was in the Republic of South Korea from 1978 to 1980. And I served in the Chungju School for the Blind in Chuncheonbukdo province. There was a story uh, that I never forgot. There was a, a child who had severe arthritis and she was blind and um, very ill in many ways. And one day the, the other children brought me to the dormitory room and she was crying and she expressed to me that she didn't see any point in living. And I had a Korean psychiatrist for a friend. So I called him. Um, as, a, as a school teacher later, I can't imagine taking the kinds of liberties that I did in that school. Um, absolutely could not have gone through channels and done that. But anyway, I called my friend, Dr. Ahn, who's a psychiatrist. He said, bring her to the hospital. So I brought along one of the teachers who was also blind and um, was missing a hand. He had played with explosives as a child in the Korean War and had blinded and crippled himself in some ways. So we took a taxi to the hospital and um, the preferred way to take a, a child who couldn't walk was on our back. So I had this little girl on my back. Here I am, this tall American woman with a small child on my back leading a blind man and it was one of those very few times where I broke my own rules and I was wearing blue jeans. So anyway, I walked into the hospital asking to see the psychiatrist. And I suddenly got this vision of myself as, they must think I'm really crazy if I have all of this hanging off of me. I must need a psychiatrist. Yeah. He did help the child.